All rise. I want viewers watching my show to believe in themselves. Judge Hatchet is compelling. I was not the first one to throw a walk. Let me just tell you what you just said. Compassionate. I really enjoy being a judge. Now I am touching people who I will never know I touched. She's powerful. You should have never let them walk out of your life when she was three. And she's on the bench. Don't get me preaching up in here today. Right. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchet. Janet Mullaney is suing Deborah Tan in the amount of $1,000. Ms. Mullaney claims Ms. Tan's son is a bully and says her son sprained his ankle trying to get away from the defendant's son. Ms. Mullaney, you are here suing Ms. Tan because there was an injury to your child at her child's birthday party. Is that correct? That is correct, All Your right, Honor. So talk to me about what happened. Okay, Your Honor, we received um, an invitation from Mrs. Tan uh, uh, inviting my son, Joshua, to a birthday party. His whole class was invited. It was an eight-year-old birthday party. And we were a little bit apprehensive in, in going to the party. Why? Because my son said that Nathan is more like a bully. Nope. My son does not bully people. And that he didn't like him. That's not the parent I am. So, but I wanted to teach my son that you can't run away from bullies and to pre prevent him from having um, social interaction with his other classmates. So I convinced him to go, you know, that he had other classmates to play with, that he did not necessarily have to play with Nathan. But I wanted him to get the experience of going to social parties. Yeah. So we, we get to the party, um, we were directed to go to the backyard. And when I got there, I noticed that she had tables set up for food and they were mm -hmm. playing games. Mm -hmm. And then they had, had this big bounce house type of trampoline right. for entertainment. And I did notice, Your Honor, that there were adults uh, by the uh, bounce house supervising as the kids were jumping. Okay, All And right. Your Honor, I just wish that she would have talked to me ahead of time about the bullying and let me know you know, because it's I didn't very know about interesting, that. Ms. Tan, because I was thinking the same thing. I just think that it would have been really helpful had you had these concerns that you simply call her up and say, look, let me just tell you, this is a concern my son has expressed to me. I'd like to talk to you. We want to come to the party. We appreciate the invitation to the party, but I got a concern. Did you not think to do that? Yes, that's true, Your Honor. But you know, there's always two sides to the story. So I listened to my child tell me about her son bullying. But because I was going to be there, I wanted to observe myself. All right. Nathan's so you go to the party, and there's adult supervision around the bouncy house. Yes. So you have planned this party. You invite all the kids in this class, mm -hmm. and they're all there. And so, from your perspective, were things going well? Things were going excellent. The bouncy house, everybody had fun in there. I had previously used the bouncy house. I follow all the rules. Mm -hmm. I have the specs of the bouncy house with me right here. I'd like to see that. All right, so now. It's only for five to eight children. Okay. And supervision is recommended. So I always have one person supervising at all times. Okay, all right. So the kids are having fun. Yes, they are, Your Honor. And so what happens? So um, Nathan opens his gifts. Everyone's happy. Everybody's looking. Mm -hmm. And then I, I observed the kids went back to play. So I observed uh, Nathan and my son Joshua running around. Mm -hmm. And then I observed my son Joshua run, to the, run inside of the bouncy house. Okay. And Nathan followed him inside. And Mrs. Tan was standing by the bouncy house. So mm -hmm. I had no concern to, to check on them. And all during the time we were there, I never really observed Nathan being bullyish. Okay. Be, you know, so I had no. Concern. So you had no problems. I you had no problem. You didn't. You didn't have any reason to be concerned. You didn't see Nathan bullying your son, and everybody seems to be having fun. Exactly. All right. And Miss Tan is there when your son goes back in to run into the bouncy house. Right. Nathan. I Nathan was chasing my son. Yes. Nathan was chasing us inside yes. the bounce house. Yeah, they but that's kind of what kids do, right? Mm -hmm. Well, no, he yes. Well, Nathan, I found out later. I mean, from Joshua that Nathan was chasing him, and Joshua did not want to be chased. He was trying to get away from Nathan. 
Well, I was there and it didn't seem like that. It just seemed like a friendly game of tag. However, they were horsing around, so I did tell them to calm down and they did for a little bit, but there are other kids to watch. So I was watching the other kids and then I saw her son Joshua climbing up the side on the netting and I told him not to do that and he would not listen to me. I told him to stop a second time and he would not stop. And then I told him to get down the third time and then he fell and then he hurt himself and he screamed. Coming up on The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. My son did get hurt, and he got hurt as a result of your son chasing him. He did not want to be chased. He, he climbed up on the uh, wall just no to get away from him. No one asked him to him. climb up the wall. He was trying to get away from your son. And later. You were the originator of the design for the I first robot. I designed everything. I came up with the name. Well, Your Honor, an articulating uh, piston is very common as a weapon in these tournaments. I didn't see you come up with the idea then. Closed captioning provided by... If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Janet Mullaney, who is suing Deborah Tan for medical expenses. So what happens when you come and you see your son screaming? What happens? Immediately, first of all, it, I was in a state of shock because I didn't expect for that to happen because of the way he screamed. It's one of those screams where you know that he was in a lot of pain. So I immediately went to him and took him to the car right. and, and just basically told her I was going to the hospital to, ch to check him out. Okay, she was trying to explain to me what happened, but at the time I just knew my son was hurt and that he needed medical attention. And so she was trying to explain, you were trying to explain yes. what had happened and what yes. did you say? And I said he wouldn't listen. I told him at least twice to not climb up the side of the netting That's and he not didn't like my listen. Son, Your Honor. That's However, not like him. I did that not, not immediately like say that. Immediately I offered help. I offered to call 911. Any child that's hurt, any parent feels that. Yeah. But that's not what the issue is. My son did get hurt and he got hurt as a result of your son chasing him. He did not want to be chased. He he climbed up on the uh, wall just no to get away him from to him. No one climb up the wall. He was trying to get away from your son. You my should son have just playing, asked your son to move. My son to was leave playing a along. friendly game of tag. That's that what boys do. They play that tag. That was not friendly. My son told me it was not friendly. You weren't he, there to see it. But he asked. He asked your son to leave him along. I did not hear that. Ooh, mercy! So now you take him to the emergency room, and what happens? Okay, so your honor, they give him. Uh, they give him an X-ray, and I have the invoice here. Please where he sprained his ankle. He had to wear a cast for three or four weeks. It was very painful. It took him about four weeks to get back to normal activities. All right, and so you are trying to claim your deductible. Yes, Is that right? So the, that is the, correct. the bill exceeded the $1,000, but you are trying to get what was out of pocket. That is correct, Your Honor. All right, so you contact Ms. Tan, and what do you say to her? Well, I told her, I said, well, since it was your son who antagonized my son and he was trying to move away or get away from your son because he was in fear. And then also the fact that she owned the bouncy house so she had liability of anyone getting hurt in that bouncy house that she was taking on that liability. First that, of all. That I feel that she should be responsible for. A bouncy house has risks. Just like playing a sport, there's inherent risk. But you didn't have us to sign off on any waiver. It's a party. It's liability. It's a party. Do you sign off on a waiver before you go to a party? It all depends on the entertainment you have. If, if it's, a, it's a pony ride, they usually have you sign liability. Anything that's, that you're going to physically participate in, there's, there's a risk. If you had rented it, you would have had insurance for that bouncy well, house. Well, Your Honor, I've never been to a children's party where I've had to sign a waiver. That was because the people are probably rented and they had the insurance, so they did not require the parents to sign a waiver. But because it was your bouncy house, you had liability. Second of all, what I want to mention is after Joshua got hurt, Nathan 
was very concerned. He was asking me, is Joshua okay? Can we go visit him? Well, that's not an issue. I understand they're boys. He cares. I know he cares, but unfortunately the accident happened. I don't and think you're my responsible. son's bully. And right. you're responsible because right, it's gonna, your bouncy house. I'm gonna house. rule on this, but let me just say this to you. And I'm not talking to you as a judge right now. I'm talking to you as a mother. Yes, ma'am. A mother of two active, rambunctious sons who are now adults and uh, a grandmother now of a two-year-old and a four-year-old little boys. Wow. And the truth is, frankly, I've never had to sign a waiver for either my children or my grandchildren. If I thought for a minute that Miss Tan's son had physically, purposely injured your child... Yes, ma'am. There would be no question, and I would award damages. But I don't think that's what happened nor should I think that she should be liable under these circumstances because it's a party and kids are playing and he's climbing up the netting for whatever reasons and he falls and he falls perhaps in an awkward position and he hurts himself and it's unfortunate. It is unfortunate. But your honor. But I am not gonna give you this thousand okay. dollars, Miss Mulaney. And what I need you to understand is that accidents can happen. And I understand that. And that, that we as parents have to understand that accidents can happen and we can't sue every time an accident happens. I am glad that it wasn't far more serious than this. I'm sorry that he had to endure this, but I also would tell you that there is a teachable moment in here. And so for the reasons I've articulated, I'm denying your claim of $1,000. But I hope you, as mothers of these children, will actually have a conversation. Yes, and if there's still any concerns, I hope that you and Ms. Tan will talk about it and that you will be open to listen to what Ms. Mulaney has to say. Are we clear? Yes, ma'am. There's nothing further. We'll stand adjourned. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's claim has been denied. I'm sorry Joshua got hurt. I hope we can get together soon for a play date. I'm open to that. I would like for them to be friends. Coming up. You are claiming that you should have one third of it. Yes, because I also um, suggested after that it should fly and they're still using the name. I came up with that name. Closed captioning provided by. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. Leland Blurg is suing Miles Nebden and Dashiell Hebel in the amount of $1,000. Mr. Blurg claims the defendants used his design to win a robot competition and says they failed to share the prize money. Leland, you are suing. Um, actually, they were your partners in kind of a business venture I guess or at one point. Is that correct? I guess you could say they were like partners, except I did most of the work. So tell me what happened and why is it necessary for you to sue them? Well, we met um, when we were all interns at Berkeley. Mm -hmm. um, we were um, engineer interns and we were like sitting in this room for like hours. And then I brought up how I liked robots and watching them fight and it turned out they did too. So I was like, so we decided to start a team where we'd go to competitions and like build robots and then have them fight other robots. And what was the understanding about how this relationship would work between the three of you? Yeah, well, we all discovered a common interest, and um, he was more aggressive as far as the design in the first time that we did it. Um, I was the only one that wanted to put up the resources to fund the robot and its construction, and we did all of the construction in my workshop. And Dashiell here is pretty great at video games, so we had agreed that he was going to be the pilot. And the first tournament that we did, we probably lost everything just because it was um, completely useless and um, none of the parts could be salvaged after that. And So the three of you all get together, you fund it, you're the pilot, you were the originator of the design for the I first robot. I designed everything. I came up with the name. I came up with like, um, the because on our, the robot we have a boot and it's like super heavy like steel. Uh huh. And it just like smashes everything. And I came up with that. Well, Your Honor, an articulating uh, piston is very common as a weapon in these tournaments. Um, would, would you have thought of that? Like, yeah, why I mean, didn't you? I didn't see you come up with the idea then. Coming up, 
We just agreed that I was going to recoup 7,000 from my original investment in both of the first two robots. Well, if they're going to continue using the Claude Hopper name, I think it's only fair that I get a portion of the winnings. <laughs> Closed captioning provided by... You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. The Verdict with Judge Hatchett is back with the case of Leland Blurg, who is suing Miles Nevden and Dashiell Hebel for breach of contract. The robot yeah. got completely destroyed. My robot yeah. was fine. It was his piloting that got it destroyed. Oh, this, well, is, this is crazy. <laughs> the constant that we had in the second tournament was that Dashiell was also piloting it, and we won, and we created a completely different robot that had flying capabilities, and that was why we won. We used a different design, and we also incorporated flamethrowers on the design. And, and is that the subject of why we're here? Because there was prize money that was won at the second tournament? Correct. Yes, and you are claiming that you should have one third of it. Yes, because I also um, suggested after that it should fly, and they're still using the name Claude Hopper, which is, I came up with that name. And you cut him out because of what? Because it wasn't fun anymore. Wasn't fun anymore. It didn't have fun. any respect working working with for him. us. It yeah. felt like. No respect for How do you mean? What do you mean he had no respect for you? Well, he still blames me for the destruction of the it first was, robot, even fault. though my piloting skills did carry us through the uh, So you're saying that he was responsible, Dash was responsible for the first robot being destroyed? Yes. Because I, you're saying he didn't have good piloting skills. Yeah, I originally wanted to pilot it. So what's the status now of the robot? The robot's still um, in great condition. We, uh, we just agreed that I was going to recoup 7,000 from my original investment in both of the first two robots, and then we just split the remainder, um, 1,500 each. Well, if they're going to continue using the Claude Hopper name, I think it's only fair that I get a portion of the winnings. <laughs> Or, or give me the, or give me we the actually, robot. We actually renamed it. I mean, it's inspired by Claude Hopper, but it's Claude Hopper Mark II, so. Judge Hatchett's verdict when we return. Promotional consideration provided by. You're watching The Verdict with Judge Hatchett. You all got to a point where you just went your separate ways. You're saying it was no longer fun. He wasn't easy to work with. He was insulting, whatever. But there was an initial basis that really launched this whole project. Now, obviously, it has evolved into other things. And so I'm going to award him $500 that the, each of you all will owe him $250. And then I need you all to go your separate ways, right? You need to rename it something totally different from Clock Hopper, whatever it is, to Mac. Uh-uh. Let's get a whole nother name. And then you need to go on with your life and design your robot and hopefully find a time that maybe you all will all end up in a competition oh, and we'll me. see who's really the best at this. There's nothing further. Judgment for the plaintiff and the amount of $500. We'll stand adjourned. Judge Hatchett has ruled in favor of the plaintiff. The defendants have been ordered to pay $500. You can have the $500, you can have the name, but you can't have the robot. Next time I see you, I'll have my own robot. This has been a production of Entertainment Studios.